是位很优秀的爸爸妈妈，但是我给你们说一个 Ben Carson 的妈妈的故事。他长大的时候，他和他弟弟十一十一岁九岁，他妈妈要求他们兄弟俩每个星期都读一本书，而且读完这本书，星期五一定要写个报告，这个报告一定至少有一页，每个星期都读书，每个星期写报告，这样子 teenager 六年七年长大，是他到第。It's incredible, right? <笑>你们哪个可以让你们孩子这样子这么严<笑>严格的学习？但是只是他上大学离开家了以后，才自己意识到，我妈妈不识字。虽然他妈妈对他自己严格，每次都每个星期都要求他写篇文章，他妈妈自己不识字。他就是认为 ，When you educate a man, you free a man. The only way to escape poverty is through knowledge. 所以这样子一个人才当上一个医生，才当上美国这么著名的 representative。而且这个本卡斯他在上高中之前学习都特别差，他学习特别不好，就是他完全靠读书才才才引出他的成绩。在高中的时候，大家说的非常非常特别特点，就本卡斯特点就是，大家都是中国人都是虎妈，咱们要记得拉琴呀，什么什么弹琴呀，什么，其实在各个。呃，那个国家、种族，哪个国家都有一点证明了，对这人好，就是 reading 是对这个小孩的成长是最有作用的。本来好几个黑人都是这样的结果，都是这么出来的。OK， 那刚才呃，苏桑海叔叔代表 Bernie Sanders 在谈 education， 所以我想要提 Ben Carson 和我自己的两个对 education 的 point。OK， 好。第一个是，现在二零一六年 education 是一个 bubble。OK， 我在 Columbia 上学。我有奖学金，但是没有奖学金的人，每年学费六万以上。嗯，是是。夏瑞叔叔的儿子狗狗在 Harvard 上学，我不知道他们具体是多少学费，但是至少五万以上，对吗？对。Tuition 加上 food and board， 这样子五万六万，这是好大学。Georgia Tech 也是四万，就是大学毕业四年以后，至少有 two hundred thousand 的投销。一个 education 是不是值这么多？我们为什么教这么多？我们将来想不想一直教这么多 ？This is a question that we as a country need to ask. Personally, I think it's a bubble, just like there was a real estate bubble in 2008. Right now, there's an education bubble in 2016. And one day, sooner or later, we'll have enough people who have graduated with college degrees that can't find jobs that will realize that the education we're paying so so much to get isn't worth this much at all. I need to ask what's going to happen when we face this pop in the bubble. Okay, so that's the first thing. I, I think education is a bubble. I think we're paying too much for it. You know, in 1930, a、uh, Harvard education cost two thousand dollars. In 1910, going to Columbia, I think you could get away with it for for two hundred dollars if you're a good student. We we're paying hundreds of times more than it was in the last fifty years. This isn't inflation. This is something different. This is an illusion on the value of education. Okay, that's number one. Number two is addressed to Bernie Sanders. I mean, Sanders, you got Sanders, is um, will 吸引年轻人。他一个 point 就是说，每个人上大学需要免费 ，free education for all， 对吗？他说，德国和法国已经有好几十年是 free education for all。我们美国是世界上最好的国家，怎么这么落后呢 ？Okay, so 我代表 Ben Carson， 我想再说一个话，就是。Education for all is less education for all. 在美国，每个学生，像在 Northview， 我们百分之九十九都能上大学，可能百分之九十五都会毕业，这是很好的。在法国和德国，要是 everybody 百分之九十九都上大学，然后没有付钱，百分之六十两年后就退出了。Free education for all. You somebody needs to pay for it, and the answer is less people will make it through. Everybody will have a chance, but less people will make it through, and less people will get a college education. And you know, this won't be just those kids who don't study at all. It's across the board. Maybe if Bernie Sanders' plans come through, some of your kids will go to college, get it for free, but not be able to make it through. So that's what I want to say about the other side of free education for all. Thank you. 越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越越
for a politician, well, a non-politician. That's why he drives this force from outside. Uh, really, if you look at this country as described by this gentleman, uh, this country needs big change. But this change cannot from within. It has to happen from outside. And the only one that can change it is outside. I mean, if you look at all the politicians today, they are puppies. Really, look at that, right? Look at, look at Robio, when Jeb Bush finished you know, exit out of this race, what you know, Rubio is doing. He got all the money from these rich guys. He can, he's like a packing dog to all these rich people, right? And Donald Trump is not controlled by anyone. His own speak for his own mind. He speaks the right thing, what is great for this country. Now, he's a rich man. He is taking this, this marvelous, wonderful plan. I mean, actually, I was just seeing a, a video of it. I mean, everything was, you know, is, is decorated with gold. But for this person, okay, for this person, if this is a rich person, you guys know, you know, Mitt Romney, four years ago, when he was rich, people feel distance from him. That's not Donald Trump. Donald Trump actually have a great connection with blue-collar people. Okay, this blue-collar people, they actually support, I mean, certainly majority of them are white. Why is that? Because all these years, because of Hillary Clinton, because of <coughs> Obama, because, you know, Sanders, they have, to, they have given so many things to this, what we call free lottery. What they do, Obamacare. Why do they have Obamacare? Because what they're saying, they're taking the poor people. The poor people, what it is, those people, they give birth to a lot of children, they don't have to go to work, but the government will take care of them. Who is sacrificing? It's the people that really actually is like us, maybe a little below us, just blue collar people, a lot of white people. Those people doing the industry work, those people doing the co-work, those people, they are leaving checks by checks, but they earn those checks. The people taken by Obama, by Hillary, they don't even bother to open to, to, to go to get a, get a check. Why? Because government send money on their way. <clears throat> See, this is what Donald Trump is going to change this country. He is not controlled by. He's he actually care about people. Care about you. Talk about wall. We needed this wall. We needed this wall today in the United States. There are 12 million illegal immigrants. These illegal immigrants, when they are here, they bring some bad things, just like Dr. Trump said. You know, drugs, I mean, this Mexican, they are bring a lot of drugs here. And also, if you look at our education system, this is actually everything, has everything to do with us. 7% of the K-12 schools, these guys are coming from this illegal immigrants. Look at this. Illegal immigrants, they don't pay tax. They don't pay tax. And they are freeloading as well. I mean, certainly these guys, I mean, a lot of good guys, they actually contribute to the economy to this country. 
where they actually, you know, you know, they clean our house or they build our houses and things like that. But if you look at, they don't pay their taxes, all these illegal people here, I mean, now if you look at what is it making it worse, there are many more illegal immigrants coming from uh, this, you know, uh, uh, this Central America. You know, all because, I mean, now the terrorists come from this as well because, you know, it's, it's almost like open border terror. Sorry. Absolutely, I'm going to build the wall. And I'm not going to pay for it either. I'm going to let Mexican government pay for it. Because here's the reason why. They definitely have to do it. This is simple math. This is a simple math. Today, Mexican has $50 billion dollars. Fifty billion dollars surplus of uh, of trade with okay. us. Fifty billion, and the wall only costs ten billion dollars. This is simple man. It's a simple man. <laughs> okay, this is another great thing about Donald Trump. Here, here saying it. Donald Trump is a man with great negotiation, negotiation skills. Negotiation skill. Actually, if you if you look at all the things that he he built an empire. I mean, he loaned $1 million from his father. True. But if I loan you $1 million today, can you build an empire with a personal fortune of $5 million? No. Not that many people can do that. I mean, he is actually the people that hire people. He is actually create jobs. I mean, for many of you guys, if you're you know, in a management position, you actually know what that day-to-day -day challenge is in order to create those jobs, in order to manage those people. I mean, he has great negotiation skills. He has great negotiation skills. And, you know, and I, think, I believe he can use this, you know, to avoid the war, the war. I mean, you know, right now, if you look, you guys, I agree with you guys. I mean, this Iraqi war is just, it's bad. It's bad. You know, we pay, we're going to pay $6 trillion for it over the next 20 years. <coughs> You know, what is the past 10 years and over 20 years. Just like Mr. Sanders said, all those people that get injured or these veterans, we are going to pay them for a lifetime. That's going to add a total of $6 trillion. Do you, know, do you guys know what $6 trillion means? The federal government, you know, bad, uh, uh, the budget every year, the U.S. federal you know, budget every year is only $3.6 trillion. That's how much money we spend on this. You know, with, with Trump as president, I believe he's going to, you know, build, their, build our military, but I don't think he's going to use that as a wall. I mean, you guys all know this old saying of Chinese, right? You know, to avoid a war, avoid a war, you have to, you know, make yourself more powerful. That's the only way to avoid a war. Okay, uh -uh. Um, <laughs> even though I'm Ben Carson, uh -uh. you guys are all Chinese people. I might have Chinese sympathies too. China has a great wall, right? China had a great wall and it was very, very effective against the Mongols 2,000 years ago. And it was very expensive too. A lot of money was spent to build it. A lot of people died, buried their bones in it. Now let me ask you. It was, a, it was effective a thousand years ago, but how effective is China's Great Wall today if you want to keep somebody outside the border? Can I respond to it? Yeah, go ahead. Or maybe uh, this Donald Trump can respond. It's a different wall. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different wall. Yeah. You, know, the, you have to have the The Chinese Great Wall is, to, is, is really to prevent... Yeah. I feel this way I can fight with him a little bit more because this guy, I feel like a diminish. He's taller than me, right? Now, well, it's, it's a good example that you can use, but on the other hand, think about that. That great wall is to fight the enemy. I mean, today, we're just preventing people from cross, right? Um, today, if you just open that, and anybody can come in with the wall like 10 meters high. No, no, I don't believe anybody can I don't think that's uh, just like you know Trump says. 
Uh, the border, our border today with Canada is not an issue. Now force um, Canada to build the wall. No, <laughs> no we're, not, we're not going to build that wall. It's actually, that is actually much better control than the, 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 the other side uh, of the border. Well, but if you look at the majority of these people here, I mean, you're acting like you're, you're what is privileged, right? You, you think you need to hire somebody to do the work for you. But think about all this middle class guys, right? They're actually, they're living to the check by checks. And these guys coming out of here, they take the job away, they earn less money. I mean, I need to take care of this 40, 50% of the people. I'm not going to take care of the rich people like you. OK, is there anything about Trump now? <laughs> 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 给中国边界建一个网而且中国必须得付钱你觉得他其实这个有没有道理他为什么不敢提这个道理他的是不是因为他没有力量他就不敢连这个问题都不敢提出来川普起所以敢提这个问题就是说他的背后那个老几个就是
你的执政能力，我表示怀疑。这个管理国家和管理公司有个 fundamental difference。OK， 啊，什么 fundamental difference？ 会会，管理公司，管理公司想有公务员或者什么，你可以减员。I'm going to respond to that here。可以减员，管理国家你不能给我减员。Mr. Sanders， 我说我这个有公务员，我减员，减到哪？减到越。Mr. Sanders， do you know？ 这是个巨大的。Do you know？ 区别。In the last 43 U.S. president， who is the greatest president？ The top four。Okay, let me tell you one. The first president. Okay, let me tell you one. <laughs> Ronald Reagan. Okay, remind me what Ronald Reagan's career before he became the president. <laughs> Now, this is why I want to bring this up, guys. The U.S. system is so unique in this entire world. It's not controlled by one person. They have three branches of the government. President. Congress and justice. Okay. I do not believe. I mean, I think today many of you guys maybe have this Trump monger thing. You know, so Trump is bad, right? So I'm going to afraid where is going to take my country. Like even to this morning today, right? They're saying you are just like a Mr. Uh, Nini. No, I don't think anybody, any any person in this one country, in this country, can change things like that dramatically, right? There's always a A constraints of power to some extent. Now, and also as a president, I mean, think about this. When Obama became the president, he's just an active, active, act, activist. You know, for a, like a small, you know, subdivision or something. Probably even, I, I'm not, I'm not saying you know, uh, uh, Xiao 